Alrighty guys, hello and welcome back to another video on the channel. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can do used LoRa's in Stable Diffusion Automatic 1 on 1. If you enjoyed today's video or find it helpful, please consider leaving a like and subscribing to the channel as well if you're new. Okay, so I've got my Automatic 1 on 1 booted up here. But firstly, before we begin, I'm just going to quickly explain the difference between a checkpoint and a LoRa. These base models, checkpoints, generally are more overarching kind of art styles. They cover a more or broader range of images and we use them to generate Usually say, for example, in a specific style like anime or realism or turn or like specific things. Whereas a LoRa file does the same thing essentially, but narrows it down to one very, very specific thing that it's trying to make. So say, for example, if you want to make, I don't know, images of Elon Musk, for example. So in today's video, I'm going to be giving you guys an in-depth guide into basically using LoRa's. So let's just jump straight into things. First things first, you're gonna to wanna to choose a LoRa. You're basically gonna to to come over to civitai.com. You wanna click down here and go to models, filter by most downloaded. Go over here to the right hand side, click the filter button uh, and uncheck everything except for LoRa. Okay, so I like this model. This is a model uh, based off the uh, animated series Arcane that was on Netflix, based off the League of Legends universe. So we're going to choose this model here. Now, a little tip, if you ever need to figure out uh, information about the model and how to generate the model, uh, you can always check the description and it'll tell you what is used in the thing sometimes. But if it doesn't tell you here, you can actually click on the images themselves and it'll give you the image generation data. Okay, so I found a model I want to use with this Arcane Laura. I'm going to try using this one here and see how it comes out. So, like always, we're going to download the checkpoint first. So, go to your automatic 111 folder and go to Models, Stable Diffusion, and just save the file into there. Now, do keep in mind, yet again, these files can be quite large. This one's 4 gigabytes, so if you have slow internet, it's going to take a while to download. If you have fast internet like me, it's not. So, yeah. Then we're going to want to download the LoRa file. So we're going to grab this, we're going to hit download. These files are usually a little bit smaller. And then you want to go back out to your stable diffusion root directory. You want to go to models and then you want to want to go to LoRa and just save it into there. And like always, we're going to be using the ultra sharp model. If you need to know where to download it, just click the download button, go to your root directory, go to models and ESR GAN and save it into this folder. Okay, now that you have everything installed, we're going to want to actually install LoPub. If you didn't already follow my guide on how to install Stable Diffusion Automatic 111, I'll leave a video link in the description below to check it out. But basically, you're going to want to install the Lobe theme from this extension. So you can just load it from file and type in Lobe and install it. If It'll be there for you if you already have it. Um, it'll be there for you if you don't already have it. But basically, what you want to do is you want to come over here, this refresh button once you have this installed, and you want to go to checkpoints, and it should be there. So now we have the Toon Anime Mix checkpoint. Just click on it and let it load up. Okay, now that we have that installed, we're going to want to apply our LoRa. We have the Arcane Offset. Something to keep in mind is this information will be on every single LoRa page, but these usually trigger words for LoRas. For example, this one is this prompt tag here. You need to generally use these in your models. So a little tip, what you can do if you have Lobe installed, you can click this little on your thing on this little settings window, and it's gonna bring this thing up. So what you can do is you can click here, press enter, copy and paste that like prompt in from here just by clicking on it and copy and paste it into here. And now what's gonna happen is, uh, sorry, I didn't save it. You, if you click save, it's gonna add this every single time you click on the LoRa. So if I click on the LoRa here, it's just automatically going to add the prompt to the field box. So let's just, for example, try it again. It's always going to add it and it's always going to be there. And if you ever want to format it, just click this little magic wand thing there. So now we have that. So now what we can do, if we want to replicate one of these images or try to make one as close as we can as well, we can take a character, say, for example, we can take this character here and we can literally just grab this, go like this and just copy and paste all of the prompts into the box. And then we just hit this little thing there. I'm going to remove the uh, arcane offset because we already have that. Um, and then I'm going to remove the arcane style just to make sure. And then we're going to put in, um, uh, we're going to put in worst quality and low quality. Okay. And then we're going to highlight each one. We're going to hold control and press and then up twice while holding control. And this is going to add the focus tags onto there. I'm also going to use uh, Euler A, 30 high res step, uh, 30 sampling steps. So we're going to do a high res fix using the ultra sharp model we installed before. I'm just going to do uh, three times 
Um, and then we're going to do a high res steps of 30 as well. And we're going to set the denoise strength to 0 0.3. Then we're just going to do 512 by 512. Oops, didn't mean to do that. And batch count one, batch size one, and a CFG scale of seven. Let's test and see how that comes out. Alrighty, as you guys can see, this actually came out really nicely. It looks like the character, which is really, really good. It has all the details of Jinx. Um, it even captured some of the background elements of the underground arcane city. Um, all in all, genuinely surprised how good this model actually is. It's a pretty good one. Uh, yet again, links to all these will be in the description below if you want to check them out for yourself. Just to show you an example, if I take out the uh, the prompt tag, so if I take out the prompt tag and take out the, essentially the Laura, I'm going to show you now what would happen if we didn't have the Laura in there. Now, it might still get some details right because Jinx is a very, very popular character. That's the advantage of Laura's. It allows you to make really accurate images like this for characters that aren't as well known. But let's see what this game, this comes up with. And as you can see, it kind of got some of the details right for the character, but it's not quite right. Uh, there's, it doesn't have like the shading and the line style of Arcane. Uh, and it doesn't, it just, it just doesn't quite fit, but it got like the, the ponytail and the hair color rights and the tattoos, but it doesn't actually, like the face doesn't actually look like Jinx. Other image we got, has the correct styling of that like shading, that almost 3D, 2D kind of look to it. Uh, the face is more correct, the hair is correct, the more clothing and tattoo, everything's a bit more correct. Now I'm gonna show you what happens. Uh, let me just, okay. So now what I'm gonna do, I did I did this previous image, this one here in the Toon style with the Toon anime. Now I'm gonna show you how you can turn them into other styles. So if we use a model like Epic Realism, which has a bit more of a realism style to it, we can potentially take this character and turn her into a more realistic looking person. And the way we're gonna do this is we're gonna add realistic to the end as, as a prompt. And I'm just gonna hit the format button there. Now let's try that out. And okay, and here's the image in a more realistic style. And as you can see, some of the facial details and the details in the image came out a bit weird, but that's more just because this model is trained more for a toon art style. So with some tweaking and some other potential things, we might be able to get it to look right. But as you guys can see, this is how you do Laura's in Stable Fusion Automatic 101. To keep in mind, these will work in any software that supports Laura. So these will also work in Invoke AI. They'll also work in Comfy UI if you wish to do it. I'm gonna show you guys a little trick. So what you wanna do is you wanna go and go load your extensions and you're gonna to wanna to type in this. You wanna type in Civit AI into your extension field. And the one we want specifically is Civit AI Browser Plus. I want you guys to install this extension. Once you've installed it, just simply hit apply and restart UI. Alrighty guys, so say for example, for whatever reason, just a little tip, that if you lost an image in your generation, like you didn't get a chance to save it, you can always just go into your Stable Diffusion root directory and just go to the outputs folder, text images, and then find the date. And then all of your image generations will be in that folder. Now what we're gonna do is I'm gonna show you what this extension does. So you're gonna see a new tab up here called Civit AI. This will essentially, rather than having to go to the website, externally hit download, download the LoRa and all that kind of stuff, this site is going to allow, you, well this extension, sorry, is going to allow you to just download models directly into your Stable Diffusion install. So what you can do is you can click here on this filter, you can filter by a model name, username or a tag, then you can go content type and we can type, click LoRa, which we're going to look for another LoRa basically that we're going to generate an image with. Um, and then the rest of this stuff we can do just check it in and out. If you want NSFW content, you can click that obviously. Um, but I'm gonna set the tile size to eight because I want to make a few more tiles. So we're gonna set it to eight and then I'm gonna set the tile count to let's say 50 just so I have a bunch more images. I'm gonna save that as default. And alrighty, let's click off the filter. And now what we can do is if we just hit this little search button here, it's gonna search for a bunch of Laura's. Just let it do its thing, let it load. And now as you can see, it's given us a bunch of Laura options. There's the pages over here. So say for example, if you wanna to go to the next page, we can just click the next page. And yeah, so we can just cycle through a bunch of different Laura files and we can download them if we choose to. So I'm gonna go back to that first page cause I actually saw one that I wanted to download. I'm gonna download the Gacha Splash Laura. Now this is a Laura that I've used before in the past and quite frankly, I really like it. So. There's some really, really cool things that this extension essentially does. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna hit download the model. So if this is gonna start downloading the model directly into our install, which is great. So now if we go to Laura and we click refresh, it's just there. Now you probably noticed a big advantage to this. 
what it's done is it's actually gone from the Civit AI page and directly just downloaded this art for the cover art for the you know the model and this is really really good because it means you can kind of discern a bit more quickly at a glance what each model is now as you can see before we have this information as you can see what it's also done is it saved all of the training data and a random prompt for the tags that we can do and why it's also good is you can view the page information Okay, as you can see, it didn't really work. So this just happens sometimes in Lauras as well. So this is actually a great example to show. Sometimes two Lauras, the combination of combining them together, they will not play nice together. And apparently this is one of them. In addition to that, sometimes the model is not right either. So that's a little bit unfortunate, but there's not really a whole lot we can really do about that. But what I will do is I will show you what the Gacha Splash Art does look like. So I'm just gonna add the Gacha Splash Art. I'm gonna make it isometric. I'm gonna add a grassy field as the background prompt. And then I'm just gonna add the tag Anime Girl. Alrighty, so that's a little bit better. That's kind of what the model can do. The background image is a little bit weird, but that would just take some generations and playing around to work. But yeah, guys, that's basically a guide to Lauras. And hopefully you found my little tip of using the Civit AI extension to install Lauras pretty helpful. Anyways, guys, have a good one. See you later. Bye. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to the video if you're new.